Newsmax, but we're delighted to have him today in front of three and a half million patriots across the nation. He is from the Article 3 Project. Mike, welcome back to Market First. Thank you for having me. I didn't know that you uh, actually worked for one of the associate justices of the Supreme Court. Is that correct, Mike? I did. I worked for Justice Gorsuch both on the Tenth Circuit when he went on the Tenth Circuit back in 2006. And then I was one of his elderly law clerks when he joined <laughs> the Supreme Court briefly. Uh, I was a, a brief law clerk from back in 2017. So he had the bad fortune of hiring me twice. Well, I think that's a, a sign of uh, confidence that he had in you. At least now we know how to pronounce his name properly, because it's interesting that we have Democrat senators who don't even know how to pronounce his name properly. Um, are, were you as surprised as I was? You probably weren't, because you know him, uh, to hear the, what was it? It was like a veiled joke, but the kind of dig he made to Biden's solicitor general last week about fire alarms. Uh, she she did not get what he was saying did she, Mike? No, I mean, I think it went right over her head. And I'll tell you what, the the Biden Justice Department is uh, having some difficult time with their convoluted uh, reading of the Constitution and federal statutes before the Supreme Court, as they should. And that is President Trump's biggest and most consequential con consequence of his first term of the, was the transformation of the left of center Supreme Court to the Clarence Thomas Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah, a an amazing achievement, uh, those three justices, including uh, uh, Justice Gorsuch. I, I want to talk about what your expectations are from the Supreme Court in session uh, right now over immun immunity and other questions. But but first, have to get your reaction as a legal professional to the the fine this week in contravention of President Trump's First Amendment rights with regards to his social media postings. When, when, when do you have contempt of court and gag orders to protect judges and prosecutors, Mike? Well, you, you would do that if you were in a third world Marxist hellhole like Zimbabwe and now in New York, D.C. and Atlanta. Remember, as you know, gag orders are put in place to perfect, protect criminal defendants not yeah. the governments. They protect the, the criminal defendant in a very narrow way. It's a very narrow time, place, and manner restriction on other people's First Amendment rights to speak in order to make sure that criminal defendant gets a fair, public, and speedy trial under the Constitution. And these, this started under Roger Stone, and it was, it, it was a horrific, un-American, unconstitutional precedent to put a gag order on a criminal defendant. If there's anyone on the planet who needs the right to speak out against the judge, the prosecutor, the staff, the witnesses, their bias, biases, the process. It is a criminal defendant. You do not gag criminal defendants. It is, if criminal defendants are obstructing justice or tampering with witnesses, you can bring criminal charges for that. But to put a prior restraint, an illegal prior restraint on them is truly un-American. And there seems to be a, a structural flaw. I mean, you're the expert, you tell me that we have a judge, Judge Juan Merchan, who is clearly compromised, not just the appearance of compromise, but actual compromise, having donated to Joe Biden's campaign and with a daughter who is actively working right now for the Democrats, including Kamala Harris, including uh, the um, Adam Schiff, making millions of dollars off her father's court case. How, how does that, how does it work in American legal system that, the, the the defendant's team says, we need you to recuse yourself for these obvious reasons. And then he says, no. Then what? And not only does he say no, he puts an illegal gag order on Trump and threatens to put him in jail if he talks about his daughter's business again, right. or if he talks about the fact that Matthew Colangelo got deployed from the Biden Justice Department to bring these bogus charges against Trump after the prior Manhattan DA the Manhattan U.S. Attorney, the Federal Election Commission, and Bragg himself declined to bring these charges. This this Judge Mershon, like you said, donated to Trump, or donated, to, donated to Biden against Trump, donated to another anti-Trump cause. His daughter's profiting off this trial. Even a federal, former federal Clinton judge from the Southern District of New York went on Caitlin Collins' show on CNN on April 5th and said under New York statutes, that this Judge Mershon has to recuse because you go out six degrees 
for ethics issues under New York statute. The daughter is the first degree. So the fact that his daughter is profiting from this trial, an actual conflict of interest, like you said, at a minimum, it's, a, it's an appearance of a conflict of interest. Judge Mershon has to recuse under New York statute, but he doesn't care because the whole goal of the Soros funded Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, this former Biden top political appointee, Matthew Colangelo, and this Democrat operative judge, Mershon, their whole goal is to label President Trump a felon before November 5th, 2024. They don't care what the law is. They don't care what the evidence is. They don't care if they get reversed. Their yeah. sole goal is to interfere in the election. We're talking to Mike Davis. Follow him right now, article3project.org on his Substack, mikedavis.substack.com, and on Twitter at MRDDMIA. That's MRDDMIA. We'll be back with Mike in a moment. And give us a follow as well. We're on all the social media platforms. Just look for Seb Gorka or Sebastian Gorka. Uh, don't forget, you can watch us on your Roku, your Fire Stick, or just download the Salem News Channel app. And for unique content from me, I'll have a, I'll have a brand new article up right after the show. Go to my Substack, Sebastian www.sobstack.com. We'll be back after these messages. ...of your Twitter handle? <laughs> it's, it's my initials and Des Moines, Iowa, where I'm from. I set that thing up like 15 years ago, oh. 16 years ago. And I just didn't know what the hell I was doing. It's and, M R D D M I A. And then when did you set up the project? Article three project I launched in 2019. So it's going on over, just over five years. Article three project. Was it cool to work for Gorsuch? Hey, look, he's a friend. I always say he's a fantastic former boss. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, look, he's a hard ass when you work for him. Oh, really? But... He's a hard ass? Oh, oh yeah. He, he seems is... like, like like a kind of kind of soft and gentlemanly type. Oh yeah, that that's how he fools people. He's like a <laughs> he's a he's like a gentle lion and just rips you apart. Um, so, and no, how did how did you get connected guy. to him? I met him in the Bush when I was in the Bush forty three White House back in two thousand five. I helped him become. I helped him get into the Justice Department. Oh, uh huh. And what did you do for the White House? I was in the Office of Political Affairs at the time, and I, it was my job to do the hiring and firing of the political appointees. Mm. That must have been fun. You must have made a lot of friends. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I, the people we hired, I made friends with them, like Neil Gorsuch. <laughs> the people we fired, not so much. Two minutes. Yeah. Apparently, Byron Donalds and Lauren Boebert did a little press conference at George Washington University, and they got surrounded by counter protesters. When? Uh, as of 20 minutes ago, my buddy Wid Lyman tweeted about it. Oh, is there any video? Uh, no video yet, it doesn't look like. Just this photo. This photo is daunting. I'll send this to you. Yeah, please. Just look at that. It's almost like a painting. Or, I, oh, it's still sending. And delivered. Oh, um, I'm going to use Colbert here like I oh, was going to. 11, yep. Yeah. You say you'll tee up Colbert? Yeah, I will. I'll do okay. I'll do my pillow, then I'll tee him up. Pillow.
Knee deep in the swamp. First place in your hearts. America first with Dr. G. Does that take you back? Music louder, louder. Crank it up. Bit of streets of San Francisco. Young Michael Douglas. Yeah. Takes me back. It was one of my dad's favorite shows, that and Kojak. Ah, it's like a time machine. If you enjoy this show as much as we love making it for you, then please support those who make it possible. Great patriots like Mike Lindell. He's a friend of President Trump's as well. And the left hates him. That's enough reason to buy American at his website, MyPillow.com. Hundreds of items, not just the MyPillow, all made in America for you here in the United States. Use my name for up to 66% off and free shipping. Don't buy that Chinese garbage on Amazon. Buy American and also infuriate the left whilst you're buying stuff from my Lindell. It's a twofer. It's great. Call them up. 800-829-8468 MyPillow.com. That's 800-829-8468 MyPillow.com. Promo code G-O-R-K-A. I remember when Stephen Colbert used to be funny. Now he's just a lunatic. Cut 11. The judge lamented that that is the most he could legally fine him, warning that if Trump keeps violating the gag order, jail may be a necessary punishment. <laughs> I don't know if it's necessary for Trump, but I need it. You need it? Is that supposed to be funny? Is that a joke? Let's talk to somebody who takes it seriously, who doesn't find it risible from the Article 3 project, our good friend Mike Davis. Mike, uh, two questions for you. Let's start with, of course, you don't have a crystal ball. But what is your expectation? I presume, and maybe I'm wrong in doing that, that even the liberal justices would envisage it's dangerous to strip all presidents of their immunity because even, in that case, Democrat presidents wouldn't be able to exercise their presidential powers because they'd be in court every day of their term in office. So uh, is, this a, is this a no-brainer for the Supreme Court when it comes to the, the Trump decision? This should be a no-brainer, but unfortunately we have three Democrat appointees on the Supreme Court who tend to be left-wing activists. Uh, remember this, members of Congress are immune from criminal prosecution for their official acts, not their personal acts, their official acts. So are federal judges. Why the hell would the president of the United States not be immune from criminal prosecution for his official acts? Again, not his personal acts, right? There is a 40-year-old precedent in the civil context, uh, the Nixon case, where presidents are immune from civil prosecution for their official acts. The Supreme Court will very easily extend that and say that, yes, presidents are immune like every other branch of government for their official acts. Otherwise, What you're going to have is the Trump 47 Justice Department bringing capital murder charges against President Obama and now Judge David Barron on the First Circuit in Boston, uh, Obama's legal advisor at the time, for the extrajudicial drone strike on two American citizens, including a minor. You could have Biden charged for his illegal mass parole of 10 million illegal immigrants into our country and the resulting crimes. You can have George W. Bush and Dick Cheney charged for, at best, reckless reliance on faulty intel that led to the Iraq war and hundreds of thousands of deaths. Where does this end? It will destroy our presidency and therefore our country if you do not protect presidents in their official capacity. Yeah, yeah. All right, second question is a tougher one. We might have to uh, break this down on, on my Newsmax show on Sunday, Mike. I see one of the biggest, look, I realized very early on in the, in the Trump administration that the most corrupted entity we had to deal with was the DOJ. I mean, you know, FBI is bad, CIA is bad, but the literal political extension of the DNC is the Department of Justice as we inherited from Obama. However, in the years since the boss left the office, I see a huge problem with judges. I see judges that are either political, like Engeron, like Chutkan, like, you know, all of the ones we've discussed today. And I see Federalist Society nominated judges who are cowards. How do we fix this, Mike? Look, I think President Trump's biggest and most consequential accomplishment was his transformation of the Supreme Court and the, uh, the appointment of a record number 
of judges on the federal appellate courts. And most of, almost all of President Trump's appellate judges on the court, on the appellate courts are rock solid. What President Trump needs to do is we're gonna build off of his first term. Remember in the first term, we only had a two seat majority in the Senate and you had Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski and Jeff Flake and many others who made it impossible to confirm hard charges. Well, the Senate has gotten more red and President Trump's gonna win by a bigger margin this time. He's gonna win by two points, I think, and we're gonna pick up Senate seats. So we'll have a comfortable margin in the Senate, maybe 53 seats uh, in, the, in the Senate where we can actually build on President Trump's success from his first term. But look, what needs to happen, and I'm gonna play a, a key role with helping President Trump stay, pick- stay, his- stay, stay on the line, we'll continue in the break on Rumble. We're up against the clock here, talking to Mike Davis of the uh, Article 3 Project. I'm Sebastian Gorka, this is America First. Please join in the fight by cutting your cord with your cell phone provider if it's one of the big companies. They are left-wing, they are woke, they fund causes like Planned Parenthood and foundations that censor and cancel conservatives. Switch today to the only Christian conservative cell phone company in America. It's the one I use, Patriot Mobile. You keep your old number, keep your old phone, or they'll give you an upgrade, but you will be with a company that's donated millions of dollars to the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, and the Sanctity of Life. It's as easy as calling 972-PATRIOT, patriotmobile.com slash Gorka. Free activation with my name. That's patriotmobile.com slash G-O-R-K-A 972-PATRIOT. reason that, that President Trump is going to build on his success from his first term uh, in his second term, and he's going to pick judges this time, and I'm going to help him do this. We're going to pick judges who are fearless, right? Not only do they have to have the elite credentials, but they have to show that they have courage. And that's I, I have to be honest problem. with you, Mike. I, I think the, 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 the Federalist uh, Society was a dud for us in the White House. Um. Well, I'll tell you, the Article 3 project is a, a bit of a different beast, as we've seen. Well, are you last... laughing because you agree with me or not? Well, I mean, I tend to look, I tend to agree that Republican lawyers tend to be wimps. And so I think it's important in okay. this second term that we get lawyers in there like Mark Paoletta, like Jeff Clark. All right. Are, people are, who are there enough these... of them? Well, we're going to find them because you know what? There, there certainly are enough wimps. We've had our fill of wimps, and uh, and, and, and I, does does Leo get it? You know, I, I I haven't talked to Leo for a while, so I don't know. But I would say this: that uh, look, if if you went through Trump's first term and you weren't red pilled, <laughs> right, 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 doing, yeah. If you think that everything's going to go back to normal, at, yeah. uh, you know, when Trump goes right, away, then you're right. incredibly naive, and you're part of the problem. Yeah, good. All right, we'll continue tomorrow morning uh, for the uh, for the Newsmax show. Thank you very much. Thanks, buddy.